Welcome back to another episode of Greels Reels. Today, I'm joined by Kevin Victome, TK, U Ottawa DB rookie. Um, honestly, shut the shut down the his side of the field through the whole season. How's it going, man? I'm great, bro. I'm great. Healing up right now, letting myself feel good after a workout. But good to be here, bro. Yeah, this is uh, your first OUA offseason. How's it uh, feel? I know it's a little bit different with the season being canceled and everything, but uh, I guess what are you doing in the meantime? How are you kind of staying positive? What are you uh, – what's the mindset just kind of looking like? For sure, after uh, – like, to this day, I still think about that playoff loss against Waterloo. After that, you know, I came into this offseason with a different grind. I've been, like, working hard during the year quarantine kind of stopped everything for me which really sucked because I was really doing well and it took me a bit of time to get back into it but I took the right steps got into got into the right programs and now I'm 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 on my way back up top getting ready for next year definitely got that like that playoff game is on my mind every time I'm working just trying to you know get past the first stage next year that's all I'm thinking about yeah so uh before we kind of get talking about the uh you ottawa first season there and whatnot but like you're you're ottawa born and raised eh yeah yeah i was uh, born in, i was born in montreal but i was raised in ottawa okay okay so uh yeah just uh growing up in ottawa uh what was the football life like and uh you were panthers for a little bit just uh yeah growing up in ottawa playing football for sure uh i started off with raiders i played raiders and kafa for since i was i think 13 years old and then I got to a point where I wanted to start playing more competitively, started playing Panthers. And I met a lot, a lot of great guys playing Panthers. But our rivals, hometown rivals were Sooners and also Myers Riders. So at the time it was like, it was big, you know, it was a fun time. You met a lot of great athletes here. And like now, like with that, we just all grew up together every year, coming back to play on the same team, meeting you guys and everything. So me doing that and still being able to finish at Ottawa U, it's like all my friends still see me doing what I've been doing. You know, they still see the year by year progress every time. Family still still gets to visit. You know, people still I represent what I've been working for this whole time. So I mean, I can't complain at all. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so before you just uh, you made it official, uh, I guess what was kind of going through your head? I know you kind of touched on some examples, but why why the University of Ottawa? Um. Honestly, I told myself that uh, I, I wasn't even planning on coming to Auto U at first. I really wasn't before all the recruiting things started. I had my eyes on different schools. But University of Ottawa, definitely what they did for me is they showed me a lot of attention. They showed me a lot of reasons why I feel like they wanted me on the team more than any other schools. And once I started actually being open to them and seeing what they could offer, I was just like, I was I was impressed by it all, and I was telling myself not even to really think about the location of the schools because at first I I definitely wanted to move out you know I wanted to go do my own thing, be in res and everything but staying in Ottawa you know I still get to stay with my hometown with my people, stay at home you know get time to like get ready to move on to bigger things that's definitely a big thing and like I said like I'm home you know so my family can come watch me every game. And they have, and that's big for me because since a kid, I've always had my mom in the crowds cheering. So, like, I it, it just turned out to be better than I even expected. I ought to you, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I don't regret it at all. Yeah, no, it definitely uh, panned out after that uh, first season. Did you expect playing time in your, in your first year? Because I know uh, it kind of went from, uh, you know, you getting on for a few snaps to then, uh, you know, you finding yourself in, like, a, a starting role too. Yeah, for sure. See, what happened was during my recruiting stages, I, that was one thing I paid attention to. Other schools would mention how they saw a future with me. They, they saw that they could build me into this great player and everything, which was cool. But one thing I noticed about Ottawa U was that they told me, we see a future for you right away. If you can come in and you can prove yourself to us, we can give you that opportunity, you know? And that was big for me because I, like, that's, that's all I really needed, just a chance to be able to do that right so I came in told myself I'd be able to do it that at the at the beginning it was rough you know because it didn't go exactly as planned there was some adversity but in due time I got it done and I really think like I I earned that spot you know Mm -hmm. it was 
Yeah. Uh, would you, how would you say you kind of, what steps did you take to more or less, you know, solidify and earn that spot? Honestly, it all started with my attitude going into it at the beginning. I like, when I committed to Ottawa U, like, it was like, all right, now it's time for business. You know, it's like they told me I have a chance and I'm going to take the opportunity. I came into it telling myself that I can't be afraid of anyone that was going in, even though I was, I was new to this. I didn't know anybody. I had to show that in order to be able to start for the team, I have to be able to take on the biggest guys on the team right now, you know. So just like coming in with that mentality, there was times where I didn't even want to. You know, some guys were big, some guys were fast, some guys you can tell they had experience. But I just like, it was like, hard over mind, you know, I just didn't think. I just went up and I stepped up. Sometimes I got embarrassed, but I think what really helped me is like my passion and heart showed from the get go, you know? And it's from there on, it was just a matter of time before I could adapt to how things were run over there. And once I started adapting, I started getting used to it. The players started opening up to me, coaching me. Coaches started paying more attention and it was just uphill from there. Where do you think that uh, heart and passion kind of drives from? What do you, what do you think kind of sparked that? Honestly, it's a combination of one, just me being extremely competitive. I just like to, you know, I don't like to be last. I don't like to be second or last. I always like to be on the top. And I have a, like, I have a deep passion for the sport of football itself. You know, the things that's done for people, the things that's done for me, the things that can help me become. I, I, I hope to, you know, like, take my career far in football like I'm not just doing it for fun right so it's like for me it's like if I'm trying to make it to the next level I can't just be coasting through it like I gotta I gotta deep deep into it I watch videos you know on like it's more it's more or less how can I put this like I pay less attention to the football now and more attention to the deeper deeper concepts when it comes to how things are run how you should move with your body with your mind everything it's really, it, it, it actually fascinates me just to think about everything like that. After that, it's like you put that together and combinate like my wants, my wants, my desire to go deep with it, go far with it. I just, it just adds up. I just have genuine fun with it. Like I enjoy having it. It's a passion for me. Who have you been watching uh, to kind of grasp those uh, deeper concepts? Like how have you been, I guess, learning those uh, processes? Um, so I followed a couple YouTube pages, honestly. Um, I follow a couple where it's just strictly defensive backs showing you how, what techniques you should do with different types of offenses. That just literally opened my mind up to different, you know, different techniques because as a defensive back, you have to be crafty with it. You can't always do the same thing. So that definitely showed me a whole new world to it. But then I actually, I also watched the, the NFL channels where they basically get NFL players to come in and explain like a play that they ran and like they're like they're thinking behind it you know because that's that was that's that helps a lot to me you know it's more it's less you lining up and guarding your man and more you lining up and reading what's in front of you seeing how you need to react to certain things that's that's things I didn't really know at first when I was just playing because I was just athletic you know I just ran I just did my thing and it worked but now if you can combine that with the IQ of everything like you're on, you can be unstoppable, right? So you just gotta, that's what I've been doing. I've been studying the game, studying the possibilities I can have in order to make plays. So when uh, looking just at the pro game, uh, are there any, uh, any individuals that you kind of like to model your game against or, or especially uh, try and take those lessons from, you know, you mentioned like the NFL films. I know they got a lot of great DBs who, who appear on there, but even maybe at the CFL level as well, uh, any guys in particular? Um, honestly, my all time, all time favorite cornerback is Richard Sherman. You know, like that's who I base my game all, all around because he, he just, he has every aspect of it. He has the physical attributes that you need. He has the IQ of a, like, I don't know what to call it. Richard Sherman's IQ is insane. And then also just the trash talk itself, like, some people like just like to play their game, you know, do their thing. I, I honestly think trash talk is part of the game as a defensive back. You know, you got you to gotta be able to talk your talk. And then once you talk your talk, you got to be able to back it up, you know. And that's one thing that Richard Sherman taught me a lot over the years. Combine that with just him explaining kind of his thought process for plays, you know, explaining 
his little cheats he has to like not get calls, but you know, be slick with it, all of that. Even when I was young, I was like, wow, this guy, is, he's a genius with it. He's a genius with it. That's basically who I try to circle my game all around. Uh, how do you uh, how do you rank yourself as a as a trash talker? You think you're one of the better ones, or uh... honestly, honestly, I don't want to brag and I don't want anyone to hate me, but I I got it. <laughs> I could I could say I'm top three on the team. If I really want to get into your head, I think I could do that. I really think I could do that. But I'm calm with it, you know, because I don't want to abuse my power, so I don't want to piss anyone off. You know, I'm pretty chill with everyone. But if if I really decide to turn it up, go Sherman mode. It's it's over, it's over. There's a couple guys that talk back, but I could I got it. That's awesome. Uh, so just kind of going through uh, your first uh, OUA season because obviously it's a little bit different now. You got uh, longer training camps. Uh, you know the season's eight games. It's pretty. Uh, it goes by pretty quick, and then you you've obviously got some big moments just uh, kind of throughout there. Um, yeah, let's kind of just start with, uh, you know, training camp and then leading into to week one um, and then first home game. Uh, you know, you Ottawa always uh, brings in a great crowd for the home opener. There's a lot of people, uh, over 4,000. Uh, yeah, so just uh, those first few weeks of the season. So training camp, uh, you know, road game, the first road game and then, uh, you know, your first home game. Um, so training camp, training camp started off, like I said, I told myself from – even the day I committed, it was time to work, you know? So I told myself, I try to do the best I could come out of training camp, you know, come in solid, right? And even with that, I still wasn't mentally prepared for the exhaustion that came with it. Like, it was, it, it took a lot out of me, but I had to force myself to, like, when, I'm, when I step on the turf, it's time to go, you know? You can't have time to waste. It was, it was fun, though, because, like I said, I generally enjoy playing football. Like, a week of football to me, where it's straight football, nothing else but football, like, I can't ask for anything more. Just got to suck it up and deal with it, which is what I did, and it was fun. I didn't go exactly how I planned. I didn't do everything I wanted to, but I definitely didn't do bad. Like, I was happy with how it went. Going into the first game, I managed to get a dressing spot as, a, as my first, like, ever OUA game, so that was a good for me. Going on to the bus, it was, it was fun. Going on with the guys, seeing... The guys, like, when they're not, you know, in football, they're just doing their own thing. You really get to see how everyone really acts. You kind of understand the personalities of some people. You start to build bonds, for sure, when you're in the hotel room. Um, the games, we were, we were against Mac the first game. And, oh, I, 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 I was so excited. I got, like, I think it was in the second quarter or third. No, it was second quarter. We got goal line. I was on my first play. I kind of messed up the first one, but they, the quarterback didn't see it. I was safe. You know, I was like, I, I got to get my bag now. Like, this can't happen. Next play, that proves to me that the quarterback kind of saw it because they were coming for me. They got the receiver coming on a slant. I covered it extremely well, batted it down. I was, I was litty. I was turned. After that, you know, we forced a – I think it was a turnover, forced a field goal. I'm not sure. But, like, I, my mom got to see it. My grandma got to see it. They're all watching. They got to see it. And that was my first ever play. That was extremely lit. After that, I didn't go back, back on much after that. But I definitely got JV's attention with that one. After that, you know, going into the next game, it's like, all right, now I showed I can do a little something. You know, let's keep it going. Keep going higher. Keep going higher. And the home opener, which was Queens, I believe. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, it was Queens. It was Queens. Yeah, the home opener, the atmosphere was crazy. I got, I had like I didn't I'm I went to games in the states and they had that for their home games, but I never had that type of atmosphere cheering for me. You know, it's always been cheering against me because in the states we don't have that many fans. This time it was that many people and they were cheering for my team. You know, it was different for me. I really had I took a moment to take it in before the game for sure. And it was down in business. And it was good because Queens, we got, like, we, we, we did our thing early. So, like, third quarter, JV let me and a couple other, like, first years get into the game. And we just had a great time. Had a great time. It was less stress on our shoulders because it wasn't, like, anything crazy. But we were just – it was our turn to show what we could do. Mm -hmm. And I think out of the rookies that did play this year, we really did put on a show. So, I'm really happy for all of us. Yeah, I uh, I couldn't agree more with that, and I'm excited for the future. Uh, just especially that young DB core is uh, is looking pretty uh, pretty strong. Oh, yeah. 
Um, so in terms of going back to that Mac game, you mentioned uh, just kind of messing up on that first play, and then you kind of realized that the quarterback must have uh, recognized the mistake because he was kind of coming for you a little bit more. Uh, but then, you know, you were still able to, to readjust and bat it down. Systematically, um, you know, you're almost kind of reacting to whoever you're uh, – like whatever zone you're kind of in and who, who you're guarding. Um, take us through kind of like that process of, you know, just kind of reacting to someone's reaction and, and I guess getting the most out of, uh, you know, being in the defensive back position. So the thing is, I, like most of my career, I was on offense. I started off running back and then I moved to quarterback and then I moved to receiver. And after receiver, I ended up moving to safety at first, playing a bit of both. And then after all that, I ended up corner. So all those positions I played have 100% given me a lot of experience when it comes to reading what they can do. Because I know what it's like being in that receiver's position. I know what it's like being in that quarterback's position. I, I know those type of things, right? So when it comes to it, a receiver running a route on me, a, a move that would typically settle a, to a DB, I've seen it before. I know what you're trying to do. I get the angle you're trying to put yourself in. So I keep that in mind. It helps me a lot break on the ball. It also helps me when I'm like putting myself in position to be able to play with a quarterback. I know the quarterback, what he's looking at the first, when he's, what he's looking at during the play, right? So it's just like all those things that I've learned over the years have helped me come to the position I am right now, which is basically just taking everything away from the guys in front of me. And the only way to do that is to know what they want. Right. So I like that's been huge for me. Huge. So now um, just kind of looking at uh, going back into the season and, uh, you know, you're from Ottawa. Uh, you grew up playing football. So you were obviously aware of uh, the Panda game before you got to play in the game. Were you uh, did you ever go uh, just to check it out when you were uh, in high school? Unfortunately not. I didn't really know about Panda until my 12th grade year. And I really did want to go because I had Carlton and Auto Youth, which I was looking at, right? So I had never really been there, but all my friends heard about it. They've been there. So I was like, yeah, I'm trying to go. But my 12th grade year, I had a game the same day as Panda, which really sucked, which really sucked. And obviously I can't miss the game. So I went to my game instead. So my, 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 honestly, my first ever experience of Panda was me playing in it. And it was, it was crazy. It was a crazy atmosphere. I loved it. I, I didn't expect it to be that big. And the guys warned me the whole week, telling me how it was going to be. And I still, like, during the game, I would take moments just to be like, wow, this is crazy. Like, it's a CFL stadium packed with mm -hmm. university students, you know? Is there any uh, different approach for yourself? Uh, just because, uh, I mean, obviously the crowd's louder. Communication on the field is probably going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, did you find it hard to adjust? Or when did you kind of think that you uh, more or less kind of settled in and, and toned out the excitement? Honestly, it, the excitement was a big factor because I'm the type of guy that the more people that are in my games, the crazier I want to go. Like, the more I want to prove myself, right? That's just how I am. So coming out, coming out of that, that hole and just seeing everyone there before the game, I was, I, was, like, I was jumping around. I'm like, yo, let's go. Let's get it popping, you know? And about the kickoff, that's what I like about being on the kickoff. It gives me that time to get it all out, you know? kickoff we went down I got my sprint out I didn't really make anything on the play but after that I was like all right we're here like now it's time to ball out once like once the kickoff was done and the first play started I was locked in I was locked in during like like half times timeouts I kind of be like oh right like I'm actually at Panda and I take it in again but honestly during the plays I I was tunnel vision all I saw was the field and now you're a part of a uh, – a because, I mean, the reason I'm bringing this up now is because the Panda game was definitely a big uh, game defensively for the GGs. And, I mean, it's ultimately probably why uh, they walked away with the win, right? You had two defensive tackles uh, with touchdowns and, uh, uh, you know, a few interceptions, key turnovers that set up our offense in some prime scoring position opportunity. But uh, so what's it like kind of being a part of that uh, defense at the University of Ottawa? And then obviously, um, you, you mentioned before Coach JV, just kind of working with him and that defensive mind. Um, honestly, 
I had never I've never been with a court with a defensive coordinator like Coach JV. And I really, really like the way he does things because what he does is he puts us in the position in the best position to succeed. But once we're there, he's not on the field and he's aware of that. So he gives us the opportunity to talk with each other, figure it out, and we can like switch responsibilities if we need to, as long as everything's taken care of, right? And that part, that part I really do appreciate because JV talks to us and he talks about how, oh, the fumble that happened with, uh, with Carlton, like he just fumbled, you know, like we got lucky. But I honestly think every turnover we got, every play, big play we made, we earned because let's say that that fumble he made, we weren't even supposed to be in that position. And we talked amongst each other, got each other in the position we need to really get the running back scared of, you know, focused on like the defense more than the ball. We make a play on the ball. That's, that's our turn. You know, we celebrate. If a guy, if a defensive lineman sell it, like gets a touchdown, I'm right there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pick him up if I have to, like I'm as, just as turned as you, you know, it's, it's the whole defensive unit every guy on that defense. And that's one thing I like, I really try and push even me being a young and like, I really want every guy on that defense to have each other's back. Every guy on that defense, if one guy makes a play, the other guy needs to feel just as good as that guy. You know, that's how we turn up together. If one guy goes up, we all go up. And it's, it's, it's great to have this defense already built. Cause like, I'm just an added piece of the puzzle, but these guys are dogs just like me, you know, they really got it, and we. I see. A, I see crazy things headed for us, for sure, for sure. And so you mentioned at the beginning of this uh, chat uh, just how the Waterloo playoff game has kind of been a, uh, a driving force for a lot of your training, and and it's still very present in your head. But uh, that game was actually uh, another milestone for yourself. You walked away with your first career uh, interception there, and. I know, uh, you know, you had a great season. Uh, the, you know, the stat line was pretty complete. Uh, you were missing that, uh, you know, pick. How, how did it finally feel to get that in, uh, in the playoff game? <laughs> Ooh, that, 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 that pick is like, it's as a defensive back, you don't want to talk about it. You know, you're, you're like, you're not focused on getting that interception. You want the team to win. You want to contribute. But it's just like, I'm sure all defensive back can relate. You just need that first one to get out the way, you know. Once that first one's out of the way, you don't care about the ball anymore. And I, I, I tried every game not to worry. Like, it's going to come. It's going to come. And I had so many opportunities during the year to make it happen. And, I like, it was only a matter of time. Once it happened, it was like, all right, now it's time to, now it's time to, you know, we got our first point out the way. Like, we got 100 more points to make, you know. It's just, we got to go now. And I was excited. It had to be that game, that that Waterloo game. I'm not going to say any names, but some receivers on that team were talking a lot, a lot of smack, you know. So it felt good to make that the game where I really just did my thing. Unfortunately, we lost, which really sucked, you know. But, hey, next year it's not going to be the same. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. And so – yeah, so you finally get that uh, that pick, and I guess uh, talk a little bit about just uh, going through, say, adversity and trying strategies that you put in place to really not worry about the fact that you know going through the season you didn't have uh, you didn't have an interception yet. Because I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but as a as a defensive back, that's probably one of the stat lines that you kind of fixate yourself towards the most. Right. Um. So basically, I put a plan in my head where. My first year, I'm not going to try and do too much. You know, you can't, I, I wasn't going to fill my head with a bunch of things, try a bunch of things out during the year because I haven't had a whole year with these guys yet. I don't have the same chemistry as everyone has, you know, so I got to do my job and make sure I do it well so that the other guys, they can tee off on. We had some 50s on our squad that were really eating, you know. I got to give them opportunities to do their thing. I can't get in the way, which is what I did. And it sucked because, I feel like, like I said, I had opportunities to make plays on the ball where if I would have maybe let loose a bit more, I would have been there. I would have been able to make a play. But at the end of the day, I did my job, right? I did what was asked of me. And that's what I'm happy with because now it's like you got your year where you fit in, you did your thing. Now I have the off season where I can really just try things out. I can really just try things out with my teammates, with the offense, with everything around so that next year, it's less do your job and it's more let's make some plays. And that that that's that strategy is really it's it's coming in handy. I 
it does suck though. I really watching the film. I watched the film a lot, and it does suck watching the opportunities I had because they were there. But as a defensive back, the most important thing is patience. Patience. Just like how you don't want to take a playoff and let the receiver score on you, you don't want to go too hard and miss an opportunity. You know, you just got to – time will come. And that's – my time – it came late, but it came. <laughs> it came. Yeah, so just, you know, speaking of the time, how are you uh, just kind of taking the days now? Uh, any projects you're up to? Uh, I know uh, I've seen you working with, uh, I believe, Limitless era. Yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. Um, like – the the season getting canceled is absolutely the worst. Absolutely the worst. I don't even want to go into that because I can I can rant for hours. But like definitely have been trained with Limitless. Limitless has get, gotten me a lot better in the last couple of weeks. And one thing that we talked about is that now they just gave us gave me an extra year. You know? I came in as a freshman, I was eighteen years old and I didn't do too bad. Now I'm given a whole season and a half to get right, you know, get the right size, get the right build, get the right confidence, all of that. Once I get past the fact that I'm not having a season, I'm just going to, you know, take it in and say, all right, I got a year, let's get right. And definitely I, I feel like Limitless is going to get me there. I feel my speed get up. I feel my power get up. I feel my confidence get up. All I got to do now is just keep that incline going up, you know, until it's time to get those shoulder pads back on and get back to work. And I know it's hard sometimes to kind of think outside of football, but uh, what are you up to just kind of when you're not uh, working out? How are you uh, occupying those hours? Um, well, other than work, we're not going to talk about work. I play, I play a decent amount of basketball with my friends. Like I said, I'm very competitive. I'm very athletic. I have a lot of athletic friends in my circle. The only thing is they're all basketball players. I'm the only football player in the group, right? basketball it's always open in the parks now so we do we take a lot of time going to play together and i embrace it because hey i don't let guys score on me that's what i do i don't let guys score on me because i'm a defensive back i don't like that and with that i just learned a bit more to be more of an offensive threat so i'm also getting getting a lot better at doing that other than that um not much really i've taken i've taken up a little bit of music learned how to make a couple of songs. I have also been looking more into, you know, finding a network where I can start YouTubing, making some new videos, making some entertainment for people because Laura knows I'm entertaining. Um, <laughs> but this is all like, these are all ideas that I'm planning just so I can, you know, keep myself busy, keep myself busy. Because like I said, at first quarantine, it was, it kind of put a pause to everything, put a pause to everything. I was, I wasn't doing much. So now I'm just, getting back into and adding more onto it you know it's time to set my game up yeah well it's interesting you mentioned youtube because i mean you're seeing nfl players uh pop up every every day with uh channels i know juju smith schuster's been on for a while he just hit one million like uh, a couple days ago yeah he hit one million subs and then uh, aaron donald just created an account um trying to think of some other guys off the off the top of my head but uh it's oh cam newton has been uh Mm -hmm. His production team is pretty great with the YouTube. So it's interesting to see all these kind of uh, athletes uh, take in that, that road as well, right, and, and start practicing uh, just more or less getting their brand and personality out there, right? And I, and I can uh, I can confirm you, you definitely got a personality where uh, it's, uh, it's entertaining. You, you've always provided a, a great laugh whenever I uh, run into you. It's, uh, you're a funny dude. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, I haven't really like figured out everything I'm going to do yet, but I definitely have like two aspects where I'm going to do like a day in the life of like a football player, university player, show everything I can do. And then I'm just going to have another side where it's just me just being myself, you know, showing, showing you two my true colors. And I know people will enjoy it because I'm entertaining, you know? <laughs> 100%. Uh, do you, uh, you mentioned too. You're just uh, in your circle. There's a lot of basketball uh, players, and you've been playing a lot of ball. Uh, have you taken anything uh, that you think you're going to probably apply to the football game from these basketball minds? Absolutely, absolutely. Like one thing I've taken for sure is just the game of basketball. It's it's just like how football is deep, basketball is as well. You know, 
there's strategies that come in play. There's defensive tactics that come in play. There's team styles that come in play. All can help you if you can like find a way to adapt it to football, right? My defense I'm playing, it's kind of different because they're, they're trying to score you on me. You know, they have the ball, they're trying to do that. But at the same time, they I know where they want to go, you know? So if I can find a way to be able to find the right positions to get in the box, because you can't, like football, you can't, football, you can grab, you can slow down. Basketball, I can't hold anyone, right? So it, it really makes me have to practice getting in the right frame in, to be able to block the receiver with my body. And that's one thing that if I can do that in basketball, I can do that in football. I can merge the two, you know? If I can figure out how to get all my guys on the same page with defensive and offensive tactics, why not do it in football? You know, I just, I, I try to look for teaching points with everything. There's always a reason why, even though it's a different sport, it can still get me better. I'm still, basketball cardio is worse than football cardio because you just, you're just running suicides back and forth and you don't want to lose. So you got to keep sprinting, you know, it's just, I'm, I'm forcing myself to, still be putting in work, still be going in the incline, no matter what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's uh, pretty much everything I got for you. Uh, so this is the part of the podcast where I just hand it over to you. So, I mean, show is yours. You can talk about whatever you want, uh, life lesson, childhood story, anything uh, you got going on. But uh, yeah, man, the uh, the show is shows yours. Oh, okay. Um give you a story huh um interesting interesting i'm trying to think of a story i should give now um i can okay so i can give you the the basically the whole process from the beginning of my career to, to where I am right now because it's it, it's kind of been loopy you know basically I started off I didn't know anything about football like when I was younger my dad really got me playing soccer and I was really good at soccer because I just kicked the ball and I ran after it past everyone and eventually I got to a point where one of my best friends he played football and his dad was really into football which is why he played my mom didn't really know much about football but I wanted to play whatever he did, you know? So she said, all right, screw it. Let's sign you up. And when she signed me up, I didn't even know what position I wanted to play. And the coach asked me, he's like, can you run? And I was like, I can, I can run. He's like, all right, let's, let's try you at running back. And right away, like I got the ball and it's just like, like I said, I didn't know much about football. Right. So I wasn't like in my head, I wasn't just go straight in my head. I was, I got to get over there. I, you know, I'm zigzagging, doing circles all of that, you know, and that's one thing that got me the creativity because I used to get the ball and like, it's really like I go one way and I can't see an opening, you know, I take a step back, go all the way back around just to go get another 10 yard gain, you know, I first started off like that, but with time, I started making that a bit more convenient towards me, you know, I started understanding more how things worked until a point where I think my last year playing running back, that's when I really started getting things going. You know, I was, I was running back head. I was going downhill, except when I would needed to, I would go side to side. But I got to a barrier because everyone kept getting bigger. And I was just, I was just staying the same skinny guy. Like I would, I would still be as fast, but like the hits I was taking, like it was, it was not feeling nice, you know? So at that point I thought, Hey, I still like getting the ball often, you know, I still like being in charge. So let me try quarterback. And I did quarterback for two years at Franco CJ, my old high school. That was lit. I was like a Michael Vick type dude. Like I didn't, we didn't have very many pass plays. Like we had like 10 run plays, but we had like three different pass plays. Right. So those pass plays, I really, I only threw it if it was wide open. Let's just say that. Like, if it was wide open, I'm throwing it. If not, like, we got to do a scramble, Joe. We got to do something because it's not going to work. You know, that's how I was at first. And I loved it. I loved it. The guys on the team loved it because it worked. We would end up, like, making really big plays out of it. But we got to a point where I just I, – I felt the pressure on me, but I didn't really 
need as a quarterback. You know, I felt like I was asked a lot, and I'm just like, I'm just having fun at quarterback. You know, I'm not trying to do all that. So I said, okay, all right. We got to a point where there was four other quarterbacks that were trying out. I got butted out. I didn't make the cut. It was unfortunate, but they threw me at receiver. And that's when I fell in love with the receiver position. To this, to this day, honestly, I feel like I'm still, I wouldn't say a better receiver than defensive back, but I would definitely say I'm like, I'm just as good as receiver because I, I play receiver most of my career. Those couple of years I played at receiver, I was like, I was really going into it. I would go to camps in the States and like receiver felt just more natural. You know, I just knew how to get open. I knew how to catch the ball and everything. But we got to a point where, like I said, like my body just wasn't growing as much as other guys. Other guys were getting beefed up. Other guys were getting bigger. And I just like, physically I could keep up, but like I wasn't the right size. So I said, all right, let me go at safety where now I'm on all your asses because I know what you guys want. I know what quarterback wants, I know what receiver wants, and I can catch. I tried safety and I fell in love with defense right away. That's the, that was really what separated offense and defense because offense is more business. Offense is like, all right, let's get it done. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to score. Once we score, you can turn up and then it's back to work, you know? When I jumped onto the defensive side, it was just straight goons, just, just, just turning up, you know? That's what it was at first. It was like, one dog over there is just holding it down. The other dog over there is like, everyone is just beasts. And when you put all those beasts together on one side, it just, that's what it is. We, you, it's a bit less business and a bit more like savage. And that's what really, really, really sucked to me because at one point, like I like to talk trash, but I would talk trash a receiver and I'd be forgetting I got to go back to the huddle. Like I really got to keep my head in the game. At defensive back, like, now I'm keeping the guys from the huddle. Like, they really would rather talk trash to me than go back to the huddle. And I love that. Like, I love getting in people's heads and everything. That's, that's definitely what made me want to stay on defense. And to this day, I still love it because that, that's turned me more into a dog. I, I bring that energy when I go play basketball now, which is kind of what gets me into trouble, kind of goes against these hoopers trying to, you know, dunk on me or break my ankles. But, hey, like, I – I, I'm a dog regardless, you know, I gotta, I gotta eat, I gotta win. So I, that energy, that definitely helped me in every single scenario for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, that's, uh, I, I'll say this. I mean, it's no trouble to tell from, uh, you know, what you've done in the past and uh, just your mindset that you're going to have a a great career. I'm excited to to see the progression, and I know uh, we're gonna have a little bit of an extra weight for that uh, second year. But uh, I know that's just gonna make you, you know, better. Um, sure. And uh, yeah, I definitely, you know, you, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to agree, but I, I definitely see uh, some all Canadians and uh, just uh, some, you know, pretty big awards and recognitions and uh, trophies and you know, and uh, an enjoyable draft day. I'll uh, I'll say that I'll you know it's still probably what four or five years down the road but uh, yeah man I'm uh, I'm excited for uh, for what's to come uh, I uh, I think this is a you know great spot to end this off on today uh, I appreciate you you know taking the time to speak to me and yeah man I mean we'll uh, we'll just sign it off here now all right alrighty in the meantime stay best guy people uh, yeah make sure to check out TK on uh, all the social medias, they're, they're going to be in the description. Uh, like I said, he's, uh, he's got a bright future, uh, defensive back at the U Ottawa GGs, a uh, great dude to be around. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, working with him. And uh, yeah, in the meantime, stay best kind.